description of what we've done within these three and a half years. I think the media, you need to know it and let Ghanaians know exactly what has been done, what has been achieved. And he mentioned it, specified that he is happy to accept the position, to work with hardworking, tireless, decisive president for the second time. And I am saying that it's going to be a formality. As you all know, this government has performed. The president has performed. His vice has performed. You all have had various positions have also performed. But there is still room to improve upon it. And the second term, you all have to work hard to make it happen. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We started it. Now, this is the second session. You, the media, we invited you to join us at this juncture. It is my pleasure. It's a very happy day for me, seeing that we all are satisfied. But at this juncture, I will humbly and with satisfaction call on my general secretary as well to come and give you a little briefing. Thank you very much. more to do more. Mr. Chairman, Nana Adudam Kwakufuado, the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency the Vice President, and the Second Lady, the former president, not only of our country, but the bridge between the old and the new of the new patriotic party. Council members, we are happy, and I can see from your faces that. Today is the day. We just finished the first session by going through the process of ensuring that we meet the, constitution, the constitutional dictate of our party. That requires that the processes, our presidential candidates must be acclaimed by the National Council of our party. We are fully aware of the COVID situation and as a result are taking decisions that respect the COVID-19 protocols in order to protect ourselves and protect the people that we need. This extraordinary meeting of the MPP National Council as you are aware, was divided into two. The first session has taken care of the acclamation of the president and the consultation with the National Council to nominate the running mate, and that has been done. The presidential candidate of the new patriotic party is His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. The running mate for the new patriotic party is His Excellency the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia. From the qualities and the exceptional consistency that the President has shown and the confidence he has reposed in the vice president clearly shows that this man has an exceptional quality that requires us as a party to acknowledge. Now, the name Baumia is a household name. The name Baumia, when he doesn't even speak, create more problems for our opponents. When he speaks, that is worse for them. 
I can say without shred of any doubt that Dr. Baumia is the one of the most successful vice president of our country in all time. So fellow Ghanaians, members of the party, MPP once again presents to you the presidential ticket you are familiar with. We present to you the tried and tested ticket. We present to you the Akufado Baumia ticket. The ticket that has an unbeatable track record in terms of delivering a social contract with the Ghanaian electorate. It is the ticket that promises and delivers. It is the ticket that you and I can trust without hesitation. It is the ticket that has successfully implemented the biggest intervention in the history of Ghana in the area of education, which is the award-winning Free SHS. A policy that has secured the future of over 1.4 million Ghanaian students who will have otherwise have dropped out of school. It is the ticket that undertook the biggest intervention in the Ghana's national ambulance regime by delivering a total of 300 state-of-the-art ambulances at a go. A feat that no government in history of our country right from the days of independence until now has been achieved. The Akufuado Baumia ticket is that ticket that is delivering one district, one factory. It is the, that ticket that is delivering planting for food and jobs. That ticket that has delivered rearing for food and jobs. The ticket that has restored the teacher training allowances. The ticket that has restored the nursing training allowances. The ticket that took Ghana out of the shackles of the IMS and their dragonial conditionalities. It is the ticket that set up the Office of the Special Prosecutor to help fight corruption. It is that ticket that has successfully passed into law the Right to Information Act, which had been sitting on the shelf for more than two decades, gathering dust. It is that ticket that abolished about 15 nuisance taxes. It is that ticket that established the Zongo Development Fund to accelerate the development of our zongos and inner cities. It is that ticket that established three development authorities to achieve a bottom-up approach to development through the Ministry of Social Development Initiative. It is that ticket that has successfully delivered NAPCO, where as many as 100,000 of our youth who were unemployed has been taken through training program in order to ensure that we increase their employable skills. It is that ticket that has delivered the nation from the biggest digitization drive aimed at formalizing the Ghanaian economy. It is that ticket of incorruptibility and discipline. It is not surprising that when the MPP opened nomination for our presidential slots, nobody in the party attempted to pick the fox. Ghana, and indeed we in the new patriotic party in particular, couldn't have been blessed with a better leader than His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuad. A leader whose vision knows no barriers. A leader who believes in community than self. A leader who puts the national interest ahead of his personal interests and the interests of his political party. A leader who works at satisfying the needs of currents whilst upholding and protecting the interests of the next generation. More instructively, council members, we are talking about a leader who shows leadership when it mattered most. I am sure the whole nation will recall that in the period of global health crisis occasioned by the COVID-19 outbreak, which has shattered many economies and destroyed many families Everybody had clamored for leadership. Many presidents have given up the fight against the pandemic. Many governments have absolutely no clue on how to strike a reasonable balance between fighting the pandemic and also protecting the life and livelihood 
of our people then came the president of the Republic of Ghana and the leader of the new patriotic party who rose to the occasion carried the world along and showed the way through which his award-winning inspirational words and deeds that got the world talking almost every world leader hailed President Akufuado for the leadership he has shown in this period of global health crisis. We certainly have every reason to be proud of the visionary leader God has blessed us with. All this has been done in just three years, three and a half years. You can imagine if His Excellency Nanado had immediately followed from his Excellency J. E. Kufuo, the transformation, the foundation that was laid, we wouldn't have been here talking about just training colleges allowances, talking about school feeding program. It is instructive to note, and I think that it is important for our, our friends from the opposing side to recognize that saying that you are social democrats must not be in slogans. It must be in deeds and action. It is almost three and a half years now when His Excellency, the Vice President, put out a question to the NDC that they should show one social intervention Just program. One. Only one. Just one. Just one. Just one. We can show. Although a center-right political party, all the social intervention programs that affect the lives of our people are programs that was introduced by the new patriotic party and its tradition. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, shall we all rise up to welcome His Excellency, the presidential candidate of the Thank you very much. First Lady, Vice President, Second Lady, President John Ajukun Kufo, Chairman, General Secretary, Chairman of the Council of Elders, Majority Leader in Parliament, Members of the National Council, Officials, Members and Sympathizers of the New Patriotic Party, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. My dear friends and colleagues, these indeed are not normal times. Here we are at what should have been a crowded, happy, even riotous climax to our internal party elections that would take us to the general elections in December. Instead of the loud, jam-packed gatherings that we know, we've been reduced to the social distance correct roomful of 100 people. Thanks to technology, I know that we've been joined by hundreds of thousands of our members and supporters at home and abroad who are able to follow the events as they happen. First Lady, Vice President, Second Lady, President Kufour, Mr. Chairman, General Secretary, 
Chairman of the Council of Elders, Majority Leader in Parliament, members of the National Council and officials of the New Patriotic Party. I must confess, this is a rare experience for me in my long political career. And I'm not talking of the acclamation by social distance. I refer to the fact that at any time I have run for any office, I've had to go through a long, often bruising battle. And this is the, only the second time that I have not been contested. <laughs> Once at the parliamentary level, and this, the second, at the presidential. I'm glad to add this to my portfolio of political experiences. But most of all, I must express my heartfelt thanks to all members of our party across the length and breadth of the country and abroad, and to the party office holders who are responsible for the process that leads to the election of the presidential candidate for our party. Thank you for the belief and confidence you have shown in me. Thank you for your trust in me to lead our party to an unquestionable and resounding victory at the elections in December, just as we did four years ago in December 2016. I do not take your trust lightly. I come to this moment with great humility and with deep gratitude to Almighty God, who has bestowed this exceptional honor on my modest self. The leadership of the new patriotic party imposes a sacred trust. Our forefathers, right from the beginning of formal politics in this country, made an unspoken pact with the people to treat them with respect, and if given the opportunity to govern, to do so with honesty and dedication. At a moment like this, my mind goes to our leaders throughout the ages, and I feel strongly the weight of responsibility that comes from continuing to step in the shoes of George Parr Grant, Joseph Bwachidankwa, Emmanuel Obechebi Lamte, Edward Okufu Addo, Simon Diedong Dombo, Kofi Abrifa Busia, Victor Owusu, William Uforiata, Albert Edubwahini, and others like Bafo Seyakutu, men who showed exemplary leadership in defining moments of Ghana's history. And of course, in every sense of the word, into the giant shoes of the second president of the Fourth Republic, His Excellency John Ajikun Kufu. whose outstanding tenure took Ghana to a whole new level. I have no joy, choice but to use the inspiration that comes from invoking their names to lead our party and the people of Ghana with dedication. Today, there are some amongst us in this country who would take for granted the idea of a democratic Ghana and will make light of the rights and obligations that come with living in a democracy. If you are a leader of the MPP, if you are a member or supporter of the MPP, you would know that every inch of democratic space was fought for and sometimes died for in this country. Our Fourth Republican Constitution is crafted on multi-party democracy. We did not get there by chance. It took a long and difficult battle. Today, some take it for granted. The multiplicity of media outlets and the freedom of the press, these did not become part of our governance landscape by happenstance. It took a long and difficult battle, waged largely by the political tradition to which we belong to get our nation to where we are today. 
friends and colleagues. I recall some of our battles not as a boast, but because it bears reminding all of us where we came from, and more importantly, to remind us in the MPP of the heavy responsibility we carry. We know what we stand for, the rule of law, freedom of speech and of the press, individual freedoms, the determination to liberate the energies of the people for the growth of a property-owning democracy, to build an economy that will create wealth for all our people and not just for the elite few. I need to remind everybody that ours has been the only political tradition in this country that has espoused the development of the country and of the individual as part of our foundational beliefs, hence our motto, development in freedom. Whenever we've had the opportunity to govern, we've been guided by these long-held principles. That is who we are. We have been consistent. It is in our DNA, and we dare not and would not stray from them. In the three and a half years that it has been my abiding privilege to lead this party in government, we have kept our eyes firmly on those beliefs. All our flagship programs are rooted in the effort to liberate the energies of the people, to grow an economy of, all, of which all the people can be part. In spite of the truly abysmal state in which we found the economy of Ghana in January 2017, we can be proud of what we have been able to achieve in the past three and a half years. We're not there yet. We're not where we want Ghana to be. And we're very much aware of the amount of work that remains to be done. We have demonstrated, though, beyond any shadow of doubt, our competence in the management of the national economy, since without competence, we cannot improve on the welfare of the masses. We have also certainly changed the outlook on education in this country. Free SHS has brought relief to many homes, and secondary education is no longer the preserve of children whose parents have the means to pay their way. Free TVET means that young people can learn for free technical and vocational skills that set them up for life. The first cohort of the young people to have benefited from this brave and forward-looking policy graduates soon, and we only have to persist for a few more years, and we would see Ghana change before our very eyes. We would have an educated workforce. We would have a better informed population, and we would be better placed to compete in the world. We are investing in the future of Ghana, and it is to the benefit of every home in the country. We've been busy in the delivery of physical infrastructure as well. And I'm happy to report that just after three and a half years in office, I can say without any fear of contradiction that every constituency In other words, we have not limited the construction and building of infrastructure to the cities, but our towns and villages are seeing development as well, because we don't any community out of the development program of Ghana. The provision of water, toilets, warehouses to store agricultural produce are all helping to improve the look of the rural areas of our country. We have not stopped at water for all and toilet for all. We are pursuing infrastructure for all. Our approach is different. We owe it to Ghana to be different. The huge investments we are making in agriculture mean Ghana will soon be a self-sufficient nation in food production. 
the need to be self-sufficient has been demonstrated dramatically in this most trying year for the whole world. The arrival of the novel coronavirus has taught all of us that we have to be self-reliant, which has been my mantra since I took office in advocating the objective of a Ghana beyond aid. The pandemic has emphasized the fact that living on edge, living on a day-to-day -day economy is too precarious, and we all must have some buffer of protection in all aspects of our lives. The pandemic has also brought out some of the best in the Ghanaian, and I have been touched by the sense of community that many people have displayed in looking out for each other. Unfortunately, the pandemic has also exposed some very unpleasant aspects of our lives. Some of these difficulties, like the lack of adequate health infrastructure, the government is determined to do something about it as quickly as possible. We are embarking on a vigorous hospital building project aimed at making sure all parts of the country are adequately provided. The pandemic has also showed all of us the important role of good leadership in the management of the affairs of human beings. There are no hiding places when a pandemic is abroad. I thank the Almighty that I've had a hard-working team to support me as we have grappled with the management of the virus in our country since March. We did not plan for this unthinkable crisis, but we did prepare our economy well for tougher times, and we can build it stronger for you, the Ghanaian people, when this is all over. My dear friends and colleagues, this past weekend, our party came to the end of the processes that we have to go through to prepare for the elections in December, with the primaries in constituencies, where we have sitting MPs. Unfortunately, in our enthusiasm and sheer unbridled joy, we broke some of the COVID-19 safety protocols. It should not happen again. I congratulate all those who came out winners and have got the opportunity to, resent, to represent our party at the elections in December. As always happens during elections, there were losers. Many of these people are important personalities in our party and are playing critical roles in Parliament, as are all the others. But those of us in politics know that these things happen. We know that to use the famous words of our one-time General Secretary, we have to continue to fear delegates. <laughs> but we remain firm in our belief that losing one election cannot and does not mean the end of your political life. I am a living example. <laughs> I urge all of us to get over our disappointments quickly and unite to go before the country. This was a message I gave to the 42 members of parliament who lost when I invited them to meet with me at Jubilee House on Thursday evening. I believe that the message went down well, especially if we recollect the impressive words several of them uttered after their defeat. We have a good story to tell, and we should go out to tell it. On every sector of our lives, we should show the difference between the MPP way of tackling problems and the way our opponents do it. We grow the economy. They shrink the economy. We create the properly regulated, enabling atmosphere for businesses to flourish. They allow chances and speculators to lure citizens into putting their monies into dodgy enterprises. They bring our banks and financial services to near collapse, and we have to clean up, shore up, and restore confidence. They plunge us into doomso. We keep the lights on. 
They look on clueless as hundreds of thousands of Ghana's children exit school at JHS. We bring free SHS and free TVET to prepare our children better to face life. They resort to crude language when faced with difficult arguments. We raise the level of public discourse. We owe it to ourselves and to Ghana to win the elections in December decisively, to make sure that we keep the economy on track and not in the hands of people who will run it again into the ground. Demagogic pronouncements about your so-called, in quotes, love of the masses do not put food on the table. Do not send the child to school. Do not guarantee access to good health care. Do not assure the pensioner the value of his pension. We do not believe in pitting the rich against the poor, or the poor against the rich. We believe in helping every Ghanaian to climb up the ladder of progress, and we have been consistent in this, not just in words, but in deeds. We are told that those who are responsible for the worst economic performance of the last 30 years have learned their mistakes and seek another opportunity to correct their mistakes. That they have learned their lessons, apologize, and seek another opportunity to correct their mistakes. Dare I ask, should the presidency be for experiments? Surely not. You, the Ghanaian people, deserve better. And you will get better on 7th December with four more years for Nana and the MPP to do more for you. We have to win the election to see our many projects through to conclusion. We dare not leave the many factories coming up under the, our 1D1F scheme to be truncated. We dare not leave the free SHS to be, quote, reviewed. We dare not leave our roads to go unattended again, only to become part of a green book propaganda. We dare not jeopardize the digitization schedule on which we have embarked. I urge you, therefore, my dear friends and colleagues, to go out with the confidence that comes from your government performing well and running the affairs of the country competently. Tell our story to the Ghanaian people and tell it often. Last Thursday, the Supreme Court, presided over by the Chief Justice, by a unanimous decision of the seven-member panel, settled all the issues surrounding the voters' register and affirmed the right of the Electoral Commission to proceed with the compilation of a new register in accordance with the provisions of Constitutional Instrument CI 126. The road has now been cleared for the Electoral Commission to proceed. I am calling on every member and sympathizer of the new Patriotic Party, and indeed on all eligible Ghanaians, no matter what party they belong to, if any, to go out and register so they can exercise their civic responsibilities on 7 December 2020 to elect a government of their choice in a free, fair, peaceful, and transparent election. The pandemic notwithstanding, we have to strengthen Ghanaian democracy. The December 2020 presidential race represents probably the clearest of choices ever for the Ghanaian people to make. And why do I say so? It is because 2020 is between the current president and the president who was voted out in the last contest. It is about leadership. It is about integrity. It is about the performances of the two men 
when given the opportunity by the Ghanaian people to lead. It is about measuring records against promises. It is about which of the two leaders has shown in office that he knows how to manage the economy. It is about which of the two leaders you, the voter, can trust to deliver. It is about which of the two men you can trust with the future of your children. It is about which of the two leaders you know you can depend on in times of crisis. It is about which of the two leaders It is about which of the two leaders you believe can put in motion the necessary measures to revive and strengthen the economy, businesses, and social services, and build our country out of the coronavirus pandemic. I am of the firm conviction that this nation, the Black Star of Africa, is on the brink of a decisive step into a brighter future which will deliver progress and prosperity to all the peoples of our country. A united MPP, working under my leadership, in tandem with my brilliant, resourceful, four-time running mate, Vice President Al-Haji Muhammadu Bawumir, <laughs> who has just been resoundingly acclaimed by the National Council, the man who consistently sends alarm and shivers down the spine of our opponents, can in all humility lead Ghana and the Ghanaian people to take this giant step forward. Let us work hard together for a great victory on 7 December 2020 and embrace the future and our destiny with confidence. Four more years for Nana and the NPP to do more for you. Who could do? AC, AC. The battle is still the Lord's. Good luck to us all, and may God bless the new patriotic party and our nation, Ghana, and make her great and strong. And thank you. has been unveiled with four more to do more for you. Chobai! The battle is still the Lord's. Mr. Chairman, it's important that special recognition goes to the national organizer and his able lef lieutenants, Nanabi Abdulaziz Futa and the why do you say regional event? Is it a regional event? Ladies and gentlemen, and then the women's organizers, let's put our hands together. Put your hands together for, <laughs> for, this, for this brilliant COVID-19 restrictions operations. Kukrudu! And this is, this is beautiful. I think that it is worth that we commend them for this, for this wonderful job. At this stage, I invite uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Ohene to give us the vote of thanks as we wrap up this very memorable location. Madam. Mr. Chairman, uh, when I finish this, we are going to have a prayer. So I'll leave the thanking of the Almighty to the person going to do the prayer. 
I will just limit myself to the humans. And I think our greatest thanks will go to the whole army of behind the scene workers who made this possible. They are the ones, not just in this room, who got this room together, but the whole operation that enabled this whole thing to be viewed and followed by people, our supporters and our members and our well-wishers all across the country and beyond. We thank you very much. I must thank also, of course, those who led the process. It is important that we tried very hard to keep to the protocols. As the president keeps saying, these are not normal times. And when things are not normal, it's difficult to, to do. But I think by and large, we have tried today. So thank you, those who were in charge. I might have to thank also those who have been taking care of the party in, across the country and in the regions. Because, you know, when you are in Accra, you tend to forget that the thing is happening outside Accra. So thank you, those who keep the party alive every day in the regions. Thank you to those who we call upon when there's a crisis. And they know themselves. Those who, when something is needed, come up and help. We thank you. And we thank you for, you know, today was a culmination of the whole process of the internal elections and everything. It hasn't been easy. People have stepped on each other's feet. But, well, we are in politics. We hope that we'll forgive each other and keep our eyes on the main battle. Thank you all very much for those who came to this event. Even though we haven't been able to hug each other, the sense of fellowship is still in the room. And thank you very much, our new, old, new, new ticket. <laughs> thank you very much, our presidential candidate. And thank you very much, our vice presidential candidate. And thank you, President Kufo, that you came to preside over us. And uh, thank you all for coming. <laughs>
Can we all rise? Can we all rise at this stage? Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are leaving here for more to do more for the Ghanaian people, believing that the battle is indeed still the Lord's. We are renewing our faith and commitment in the new patriotic party by singing the national anthem, we are the new, we are the new patriotic party. Let's go. We are the new patriotic party. We are the new patriotic party. The only fight is a winning symbol. We shall win to free Ghana. The only fight is a winning symbol. We have won to free Ghana. We have win to save Ghana. We shall win to save Ghana. The elephant is a winning symbol. We shall win to save Ghana. Is she? Is she? Is she? Is she? Is she? Radu Radu. Is she? Is she? Is she? Is she? Thank you very much. The meeting has come to an end now. Please let you leave your, what is it? Minutes. All papers, all minutes you're taking, please leave it on the floor for us. There is lunch ready for everybody. We thank you very much for coming. And as I said, we're leaving here with four more to do more for the